Okay, let's talk about our patient today. Our patient today is a dentist. Young lady, a preeminent lecturer. A dental hygienist from Bulgaria. Buffalo, New York. Atlanta, Oklahoma, Vancouver, Canada, Boston, Kansas City, San Francisco, Montreal, Munich, Germany, London, and Santa Maria, California. Now we're going to place 14 lumineers, 8 lumineers, 10 lumineers, 6 lumineers, 10, 2, 8, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8 lumineers today on our patient. And now we're not treating teeth anymore. We're treating smiles. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at the transformation from where we started and where we are. Our patient today is an example of that. Good morning to uh, you good folks in Las Vegas, and uh, good afternoon to you good folks in uh, Boston and in Florida. hope you're having a great uh, dental conference. What Illumineers allow you to do is to practice conservative dentistry. If you'll think about the patients that are in your practice now, we most often hear dentists say, well, I'm looking for the right patient. Now, when you have a patient in your reception room that you're giving a six-month check to after you're finished, they're caries-free, perio-free, occlusion has been equilibrated. Now, do their teeth look really great or do they look natural for their age? Well, most of these people would like to look better if they knew they could get it done this way. What we're going to give patients is a conservative option to look better without the need to get any anesthetic and to remove any sensitive tooth structure. We're going to do that by not removing or creating a margin on her teeth because she would not be sitting in this chair if I had to give you any anesthetic. Is that a fair statement? That's for sure. Did you hear that? What are your two best surfaces you can bond to? Porcelain and enamel. And with tenure and ultra bond, you can bond equally well to porcelain or to enamel. Basically, what we try to do is follow the rule of 55. The rule of 55 is you've got five surfaces to deal with in the mouth. Enamel, porcelain, dentin, old composite, and metal. Now, one of the things I uh, would like to stress is that flying an airplane is easier than driving a car. But it takes more skill to fly an airplane. So it is with lumineers. But before you start, you want to have everything prepared. So let's take a look at what Lisa has done before we get going here. It, it looks complicated at first, but there's only four, if you put circles around there, there's only four or five groups of things that you have. On that tray, she's got the pieces of porcelain that she's treated with the uh, citric acid, the uh, porcelain conditioner. That's an important one. That's an organic acid. You need to put organic acid on to activate your silane. So she's just now treated those porcelain today. We've already tried these in, tried for the shade, determined a shade, and, uh, and I'll tell you about how you do that shade try-in. Also, Lisa has polished her teeth with the porcelain polishing paste, and we use, like to use that because it has an enzyme in there, papain. And that's what we use to dissolve the plaque on the teeth, so when we apply the etching system, then it removes and, and exposes the enamel so we can get a better etch. How many of you work with four power magnification? With four power, I'm going to be visually this far from the surface that I'm working on. But functionally, I'll be this far away. Four power is critical. Now, who uses a sapphire light? Gordon Christensen says working without a sapphire light is like working with a slow speed handpiece. Sapphire light covers the area, gives you the power, and you won't get pop-offs. Taking an accurate impression is uh, critical. One of the things that we find is that mistakes come in when they send the impression in and they never poured the model and they have drag at the gingival margin. Now what happens when it fits the model and it doesn't fit the teeth? Somebody took the impression out too soon, you got distortion. How can you tell when you have a distorted model? doesn't fit the tooth and it fits the model. So leave your impressions in an extra 30 seconds just to be safe. Let's take a look at her teeth because they're really quite attractive teeth. And so she's got a little erosion on that first bicuspid. 
And we'll go over here and we'll take a look at the right side. And uh, we didn't remove a micron of tooth structure. We could have done some cosmetic contouring, but in her case, it wasn't necessary. I'm going to put paint on dental dam on her lingual side, and I'm going to have to be careful that it doesn't come through from the lingual to the labial. Because if we have it come from the lingual to the labial, it might prevent the luminaire from seeding all the way. And I'm going to place this every place that I don't want the ultrabond to stick. Now close your eyes. The best way to protect your eyes is to close them. So I put the sapphire light, 9 millimeter tip, where I want to place it. Turn the light on for three seconds and get it cured to a rubbery state. Now I want to show you just something here where the paint on dental dam is coming through to the labial. And I want to be sure it goes back there so it doesn't prevent the luminaire from seeding. And I just take that out and I'll let everyone see what it looks like on the lingual side. So there you can see it goes from the first bicuspid to the first bicuspid. All right. Now we're going to begin surface preparation here. And I'm going to use the 35% or 30% phosphoric acid with aluminum oxalate. Now Gwen has a fair amount of gingival erosion on that uh, first bicuspid, so when I place that, I'm going to put a little excess on the tooth as well as in the luminaire on the left first bicuspid. And the reason I use uh, etching seal is because it uh, has aluminum oxalate in it. And the aluminum oxalate, when you're using etching seal on your regular operative procedures, will seal the dental tubules. And of course, if you seal the tubules, you prevent sensitivity. So now, if any of these teeth were porcelain, we would micro etch them. Then we would treat the surface with porcelain. And uh, porcelain is hydrofluoric acid, but it has a pH of only 2.9. Now, the hydrofluoric acid that dental laboratories use to etch your porcelain is 0.9. So it's very highly concentrated. So with porcelain, it's buffered and it's reduced to a very biocompatible pH. Now what I'm doing uh, is applying a solution of Tenure AB. Tenure AB was developed by a dentist by the name of Ray Bowen. And Ray Bowen developed composites, the air rotor, and a whole bunch of things in dentistry that work out real good. But there's not a better dentin bonding system around than the one that Ray Bowen developed. And he came to me at a, at a uh, convention in Atlanta, an ADA meeting, and said, Bob, I got this fantastic dentin bonding system. And he said, you know, I can't get anybody to use it because it has nine steps. So we took out a license with the ADA and got our chemist working on it. We got it down to two bottles, one solution, and one step. And that's what we're working with today. Now, if you take a look at these two teeth, they look different, and they're the same shade. Now, what shade is enamel? Well, that's how your luminaires are. They're the same shade as enamel. It usually gets B0 or B1. Where does the tooth get its color? And where does the enamel get its color? It comes from underneath it. So what we have on the left-hand side is a different color than the color of the tooth, the shade of the tooth on the right. Why are they different? Well, there's uh, light is very unique. It goes through a medium until it exceeds what they call a critical angle. And the critical angle causes the light to stop going forward, bounces back. So what you're looking at here is bounce back between air and the porcelain and that's why it doesn't have the shade that it will be when you put it on the tooth. 
Now what we have on her right side, and that's the only ones we're going to do, what we have on our right side is the shade we selected when we tried these in the other day. And uh, it's Ultra Bond Try-In Paste. Let's see, we can wipe some of that off. So we want to remove the Ultra Bond Try-In Paste. And Ultra Bond Try-In Paste is exactly the same formula as Ultra Bond, with one exception. We've got to take this off. And the exception is that it doesn't have any activator in it. So when Lisa cleans this out, she's going to use Tenier S to wipe it off. And if she doesn't get it all off the uh, porcelain, the Tenier S will cause the try-in paste to polymerize. Now once you put Tenier S on the teeth, you want to not dilly-dally because Tenier S is your backup. Let's assume you don't get enough light in there. And uh, you got 10 year S on the surface. Guess what? It will polymerize your resin. And so one day I was doing a try-in on my secretary, eight porcelain veneers, and I had inadvertently put the 10 year S on first before I did the try-in. We tried them in, and I went to take them off, and they didn't come off. No light cure. They just didn't come off. So Tenier S does two things. When you've selected the shade, and you've got everything right central in place, then you apply your Tenier S, and it gives you insurance. And in case you're wondering what this thing is that I'm using here, it's called a Lumi Grip. It's developed by Dr. Omer Meeker in Pasadena, California. And it's a real neat little, he spent a lot of time working on this. It's a real neat little suction device that enables you to carry this to the teeth, right? At least always calls out the name of the tooth, not the number but the name and this rubber plastic tip is soft right cuspid I had a dentist that did his first luminaire case tell me that showed me what a great result he got but he said you know I like to take off the tooth structure he said it was a little messy cleaning all this up and I said well Remember, you didn't do any preparation, and you didn't do any temporaries. Now we'll take the two millimeter tip for one second and spot cure each tooth so that they won't float around when I come in with the five second cure. Close your eyes. Best way to protect your eyes is to close them. Replace it, seat it, push down, see a little excess coming out everywhere. Close your eyes. And close your eyes. Okay, well, we're airborne now, but we don't have the wheels up. So we're going to put the wheels up now when we do this here. Remember, eight porcelain veneers. Close your eyes. And we just start going around three to five seconds on each tooth. Close your eyes. She was really quite attractive before we started. And that's what I'm going to show you when we get finished is that our whole paradigm is the world wants to have a more attractive smile and we got the dentist standing there in front of us saying, Okay, if you want a better smile, here's what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to grind your teeth down. I'm going to stick you, well, I shouldn't say. I'm going to give you anesthesia because I'm a painless dentist. And uh, everything I do doesn't hurt. Well, let's take a look and see what it looks like here on the lingual. Now, one of the things I don't like to do is try the lumineers in like you would if you had done shoulder preps. Because when you do shoulder preps, they kind of look pretty good and you get them anesthetic and everything. 
but they never look as good, and they do look good, but they never look as good as they're going to look after I finish them and open the embrasures, and they really come to life on the second visit. I always have patients back and do more cleaning. This instrument I'm using is a Shure 349. It's an orthodontic band seating instrument. Never will it scratch a serenade porcelain veneer. And it's an orthodontic band seating instrument. Okay. Yeah, let's see what we got in here. Look how nice that lingual looks right now. Now I'm taking the football shaped diamond here. And that's in all of these are in the clinician's finishing kit. And remember what we're talking about, how you have the foundation for lumineers. They're caries free, they're perio free, and their occlusion is equilibrated. And if it's not, you'll have to equilibrate it after you put the porcelain veneers on. Now I'm using a long, narrow, ultra-fine diamond. And with four power magnification, I go between her bicuspid and her molar. And remember, we did a class five restoration when we put this luminaire on, didn't we? Because we just put a little extra ultra-bond in there. Ultra-bond is a restorative, isn't it? What I'd like to call your attention to is how nice her teeth look when I start taking the ultra bond out. See that? Now they're beginning to have definition. And because I have four power, there's very little bleeding. We just go around here pretending like these are children's coloring books and you want to stay within the lines. And we're removing the ultra bond from the inner proximals. And this is really boring for the audience. Someone's saying, gee, if you had all that cleaned up with that dental floss, you wouldn't have to do that. But if you think about time, we're not taking a lot of time. It just seems like a lot of time. I'm also blending the porcelain with the tooth. So it fades into the tooth the same way that enamel blends with dentin. And I'm just taking this excess out of this interproximal in here. And I can tell you four power magnification is essential. And you can do a lot of contouring on the teeth as well after you bonded it because Contouring serenade porcelain after it's bonded is just like contouring enamel. It wears like enamel and it grinds like enamel. Now I come back here and I shave away any ultra bond that's on the labial surface. By the way, never work with porcelain unless you've got copious amounts of water. Or you build up heat and you cause micro cracks and you get all kinds of trouble. And I'm just opening these embrasures so that when I take the seri saw to open the embrasure, it won't be difficult to open these contacts. And if you're finishing these properly, when you run your Explorer or your gingival margin, you should be able to Go from the labial on the labial, or anywhere, up and down, and not have a catch. There's no catch on that. Then you say, what about the emergence profile? Well, if you don't like the emergence profile, you just come back and you do a little contouring the way you'd like to have it. So you're in control. Okay. Now we'll take some marking paper and we'll check the occlusion. Now look how nice that anatomy looks. 
And you can change anything you want to change after it's bonded. You can contour it and polish it. Can you see back here? She's marking on her natural teeth. I have a thing here called a Siri saw. It's developed by a dentist by the name of Harvey Putter. We just start opening the easy contacts today. And I start sawing. And if, I, if, if the sawing gets a little hard, then I stop and I rock. You see that right there? And I have control. And that contact's open. Now, a patient's been sitting in the chair now for about an hour and 15 minutes. And what I like to do from a patient perspective is I like to get them out of the chair in about an hour to an hour and a half. Now she has no idea, or maybe she does, but most of your patients have no idea what you're saving them from when you do this much in an hour. But they still get a little fatigue. Now I'm taking the thing that looks like a seri saw, but it's a seri sander. It gives you that rough sound, but it smooths all of the ultra bond with the seri saw cut through and it leaves little jagged rough edges around there so when we run the floss through it won't catch. I've got to tell you it's been a lot of fun being with you guys today and if you get a chance to come up here and visit us we'd always enjoy seeing you. See everybody. I've had a problem with receding gum gingiva and I've inquired as to what could be done and I did not expect the lumineers to completely cover the uh, tooth structure that was exposed with receding gingiva. It was just so easy to have them placed. There wasn't any discomfort in any way whatsoever. Um, it's, it's an enhancement for any person, male or female, to have a lumineer placed. The experience was most comfortable and I think that they are so enhancing to a person's smile, and particularly in my situation, being as old as I am, to have the uh, root surface exposed, not being sure what to do with this root surface that's exposed because of the gingiva receding. The lumineers have really given me a lot of uh, self-confidence that I don't have all of that exposure. <laughs>